Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa Siegel and I'm a professor of migration studies and this is a channel about all things migration. So thanks for joining me today. We are getting started again with our migration snapshot series where we zoom in and focus in on one specific country, specifically using the European Commission's Knowledge Center on Migration and Demography Atlas of Migration. So it's a really great resource for information on migration within the EU, but also outside of the EU. If you're interested in more on that, you can check it out in, that I've linked it in the description below. And I do have a whole um, video on it if you would like to learn more about that. But today we are going to focus on Germany, one of the largest EU countries. And if you're interested, of course, in other countries, you can check out other countries in the playlist here. I'll also link it in the description below. But what are we going to be looking at today? We are going to be looking at the population of emigrants and immigrants in Germany. We'll be looking at residence permits and visas issued. We'll be looking at asylum applications, one specific measure also of irregular migration. We'll look at citizenship and naturalization in Germany, as well as some indicators of social inclusion. And we'll also look at education and employment. Let's jump right in now and look at the situation of the population. So in 2020, Germany had more than 83 million people. Now of those 83 million people, around five, actually 5.3% of those were um, immigrants from within the EU and 2.7% of those were immigrants from outside of the EU. Around 12 to 13% of the German population that is an immigrant or was an immigrant in 2020. And you can also see that there were slightly more immigrants from outside of the EU than inside of the EU. Now that's just migrant stocks in 2020. If we look at migrant flows, so what happened in one specific year, let's look at 2018. And if you're interested in the differences between migrant stocks and flows, and to better understand that, I have a whole video on that. You can see it linked in the description below, or you can also check it out right here. So let's look at annual flows in 2018. And let's first look at immigrants, so people entering Germany. Of those people entering Germany, around 42% were entering from outside of the EU, while 58% were entering Germany from within the EU. So you can see lots of you know, intra-EU mobility here. If we look at emigration or people leaving Germany, what you can see here is that 55% left for countries outside of the EU, while 45% left for countries within the EU. Now, if we look specifically at residence permits, so these are, this is, of course, then targeted more towards people who are not EU citizens because EU citizens don't need residence permits. So here we're looking more at third country nationals or people who are migrants from outside of the EU. And what you can see is that at least between 2016 and 2019, um, a large portion of the people that were entering or receiving residence permits from non, coming from non-EU countries were for other reasons. And within other reasons, you also can see things like humanitarian reasons, asylum applications, refugee status, things like that, which makes sense given the time period. You can also see the next largest number is for family re reasons. So family reunification, family formation, some residence permits for work, and also some for education. And if we look at valid residence permits in general at the end of 2019, you can see that this is really mixed between kind of other reasons and family reasons with quite a few there being long-term residence permits. So now look, let's look at asylum applications. So you know that, or many of you might know about this period and that Germany actually had a large number of asylum applications in this period, especially in 2016. So you can see here also the difference between first time applications broken down by gender also, and kind of type or what 
or what kind of status people received. So it's clear that more men than women are also um, applying for asylum. That's, that's quite common, especially in an European context. And if we also look at the decisions, we do still see a pretty high rate of rejection. So from 2017 on, 50% or more of the first time applications that were put in were rejected. Now, one possible measure of irregular migration is looking at the difference between people who were ordered to leave the country, meaning they no longer had the right to stay in the country, and those that actually left. And what you can see is that at least in 2017, 18, and 19, the number of people that were ordered to leave was more than the number of people that actually returned. So the difference here can tell you something about um, the rate of, of irregular migration in the country, at least in a given year, the number of people that stayed that were not allowed to stay. Now we can also look at naturalization rates. So what does naturalization mean? Naturalization has to do with people acquiring the citizenship of that country. So in this case, we're looking at Germany and we can look at how many people and what percentage actually acquired citizenship during that period. First, we can look at the differences between EU migrants and non-EU migrants. So what you see quite clearly here is that um, non-EU migrants are acquiring citizenship more than EU migrants. And the main reason for that is because EU migrants, for the most part, have very similar rights compared to German citizens, which non-EU immigrants do not. So they can get a bigger benefit from actually naturalizing than EU citizens. If we actually look at the share of foreign citizens who have acquired citizenship, it's actually still quite low. So you really see, you know, um, less than 3% of, uh, of foreigners acquiring citizenship in any given year between 2015 and 2018. Now let's look at some indicators of social inclusion. Let's first look at income. So we can here see the difference between German nationals, European, uh, European immigrants, and immigrants coming from other countries outside of the EU. And what you can see here is that actually um, European immigrants have a slightly higher net income than nationals, although it's quite close, um, with non-national, with non-EU nationals actually um, a bit behind both, but the differences here aren't extremely high, especially if you look at the differences between uh, um, the EU in general. So I have a snapshot video looking specifically at the EU, and I also have videos on other countries. The differences here aren't as big as they are perhaps in some other countries. If we look at overcrowding rates, meaning that these are high numbers of people living in uh, the same area, you see that there is more overcrowding among immigrants than there are among nationals. If we look at the risk of poverty or social exclusion, what you see here is that um, uh, non-EU non national immigrants have a higher risk of poverty and social exclusion than EU migrants or nationals. And that is similar also if we specifically look at the risk of poverty for children. Now let's look at education or educational attainment. Again, if we break this down by nationals, EU immigrants and immigrants coming from outside of the EU, what we can see here is that there are higher levels of education among German nationals compared to all the other immigrant groups. However, this is, we do see more of a resemblance with the EU migrants and then the non-EU migrants have the lowest rates of education compared to the other groups. Still, you do have a pretty high group of highly educated within this group, but you also do have a, a larger group of those with lower education within this group. Now we can look at the labor market. So the labor market is also one of those indicators that help us to understand a little bit more about um, integration or how things are going for migrants. And what you can see here um, is that, again, um, European migrants look quite similar to um, nationals, in some cases even doing better, whereas migrants coming from without side of the EU do seem to fare a bit worse with regard to employment, unemployment, 
and uh, um, here we can also look at it by education level. That makes a lot of sense to look at employment rates by education level. And what's very clear here is that the higher the education, the more likely to be employed. However, there are differences among these groups. So one thing that does stand out here is that e the EU population, so EU immigrants with low levels of education actually have much higher employment rates than uh, even German natives, which is quite interesting. And also, in some cases, higher levels of education are very close with, when we look at medium levels of education. What is clear, though, is that migrants coming from, again, without outside of the EU do fare a bit worse um, than nationals and than uh, EU immigrants in the country. Now, I hope that just gave you a quick snapshot of the migration situation in Germany today. Again, if you are interested in other countries, do please do check out the snapshots on other countries here also. If you liked this video, of course, please make sure to like it. Please make sure to hit that subscribe button and make sure to hit turn on the notifications so you don't miss any of the other videos on migration that are coming out every week. Um, if you are a migrant in Germany, let us know, comment down below, give us some of your feedback on your own situation or how you found being a migrant in Germany um, or any other country for that matter. Please do feel free to ask us questions. We are here to help educate, so please do ask any questions that you have and I hope to see you guys next time. Take care. Bye-bye.